Hello and welcome to the homework solutions video for chapter 6, lesson 4, day 1, real world problems with percent. So as we discussed in class, students often look for what is the one way that I need to solve all of these problems, and our work with percents kind of like turn that idea on its head. We have to look at what you have, what do you know, and then what's going to be the best way for you to get there. And if you default to just always doing the same thing, while often you will get the right answer, it can lead you down a path where the calculations you have to do are really complex and leave you open for potential errors. So as we go through this, I am going to be modeling like how to pick a good strategy, how to do a quick model, so that way I know the math that I am doing is the correct math. So Destiny collects 90 bottles to recycle, 27 of the bottles are plastic and the rest are glass. So if here's her total amount, we know that she's collected 90 total, or 100% is 90. And then 27 of them are plastic, the rest are glass. And we want to know what percent of the bottles are plastic. So we know that 27 out of 90 are plastic. And with this, we have a couple different routes that we could go down. We could convert to a percent by multiplying by 100%, knowing that 100% is the same as 100 over 100, or 1. So we're just converting it. We're not changing the value. Or we could say, well, 27 over 90, maybe I could convert it to a fraction that would then allow me to turn it into a fraction with 100 as the denominator. So I'm going to quick look at both of those to see, because depending on your problem, it, one will work better than the other. And already, my eyes are being drawn to this here, because I know that 90 is a multiple of 10, and to get from 9, and then 10 is really, really helpful for getting to 100. And so I'm seeing, like, ooh, I know if I divide by 9, I would get 10, and 27, conveniently enough, can also be divided by 9, and you would get 3. So that means 27 ths is equivalent to 3 tenths, and then we can multiply those by 10 each, and we would get 30 out of 100, or 30%. So here, because we used a little bit of reasoning, really the most complicated math that we had to do was 90 divided by 9, and that equals 10. So it's really not even that difficult. So with purple, I'm going to solve this 27 over 90 to see if there's a way that we could make this a little bit easier. And so I'm going to first focus on this fraction, and I'm going to simplify it by dividing both of these by 9, and then I would get 3 tenths times 100. Now before I multiply this, I'm going to simplify again by dividing both of these by 10, and then I would get 3 times 10, and that's percent by the way, and that is 30%. So still, it's not too bad. But you could also see here the value of taking a moment to simplify first. If I had just multiplied, I would have ended up with 2,700 2, over 90. And then I need to simplify that. And that math is going to be a lot more difficult. If I choose to multiply first and then simplify at the end, my numbers are a lot bigger. And it's more likely that I'm going to make a problem in, or a mistake in my calculations. So if 30% of the bottles are plastic, that would mean that from the 100%, 30 of them are plastic, the rest are glass. And that rest amount is 70%. So 30% are plastic, 70% are glass. That's a good deal. Moving on, Mr. Plaska and his three friends are dining at a restaurant. The food they order costs $80. The bill includes an additional 15% service charge. How much does each person pay if they share the bill equally? So that means my cost of food here is $80, but on top of that $80, there's an additional 15% charge. And then that means this whole amount is going to be our total shared by four people because that's me, person one, plus the three friends. So it looks like here we need to figure out first, what is 15% of 80? And so we can go a couple different routes. This 80 is 100% of the cost of our food. 
So if I wanted to, I could start at 100%, and now I need to end at 15. And we need to know how much that is. And I know 5 is really handy in between there, because I can divide by 20, multiply by 3. So 80 divided by 20 is 4, and 4 times 3 is 12. So I would spend $12.00 for that service charge. Now, if we wanted to check this another way, 15% or 15 out of 100 of 80. Let's do some simplifying. I'm going to first simplify this way by dividing by 10. And so I'm left with 15 tenths times 8. And these can both be divided by 5. So I would get 3 halves times 8, which is 24 halves or 12. So we get the same answer. It's all fine. Either way seems to be good to go. So our total amount is 92. Now I'm not done because I need to do 92 split by four people and this 92 I'm thinking of it like an 80 and a 12. 80 divided by 4 is 20. 12 divided by 4 is 3. Each person pays $23 for dinner. Not too bad. Now in class we talked about another way that you could do this is if you know your total bill is going to be 115 percent of the cost of your food which is eighty dollars you could calculate that but those numbers already seem like they're going to be much bigger and I don't I don't think I want to touch that. These other two strategies where I've got 12 both times seems like that's going to be relatively easy straightforward math for me. So Mr. Brooks has a budget of $2,000 to buy a washing machine. The price of a washing machine he wants to buy is $1,450. Does he have enough money, given that sales tax is 10%? So again, I'm going to start with a picture. Here's his washing machine. And we know this washing machine has an additional tax on there. And this tax is 10% of that cost there. So if this cost is $1,450, we need to figure out what is 10% of 1,450. Now, we know 100% of, or 100% is 1,450. So 10%, we would just need to divide by 10, and that is 145. So our tax is $145. So the total that Mr. Brooks has to pay is 1,450 plus 145, which is $1,595 for that washing machine. So yes, Mr. Brooks has enough because 1595 is less than $2,000. So he will have some left over. Good deal, Mr. Brooks. Mr. Collins buys a table and sofa. The sofa costs $1,920. The table is 30% the price of the sofa. So we have a table and we have a sofa. The sofa costs $1,920. And the table here, this is 30% of that. The price of the table is then 30% of 1920 so if this, we consider this to be 100%, we could start there. 100% is 1,920. So to get to 30, I'm going to first go to 10 because then I can multiply that by 3. And going from 100% to 10% is easily dividing by 10. So 1,920 divided by 10 is 192. And then 192 times 3. Let's see, that's going to be 3 times 100 is 300, 3 times 90 is 270, and 3 times 2 is 6. Add those up, you get 576. So 30% is 576 dollars. So that means the table costs 576 dollars. Let's double check this by calculating using the fraction. 30% is the same as 30 over 100 times 1920. 
And I'm first going to simplify by dividing by 10 and make that 3 tenths times 1920. And then I'm going to simplify by dividing both of these by 10. So then I'm left with 3 times 192. And that's the same math that I did right there. So this checks out. And as you can see, simplifying before multiplying is the best way to go. So the table cost $576.